Hey everyone. In this video, I want to walk through how I can create and edit Azure functions in VS Code locally on my machine and then deploy them into Azure. The benefit here is I get all of the features of a rich development environment like VS Code. I might use things like GitHub Copilot to help me create my code. I could do better debugging as opposed to even if I can create the code directly in the portal, which I can for things like PowerShell, it's not a great experience. So we're going to walk through how I can just use my familiar tooling, deploy it to Azure, but then how can I also take it a step further and let me troubleshoot and debug locally on my machines. So the first thing we have to do is get some extensions installed. Now, what we're going to do is we go over to the extensions. Now, I'm going to do the demonstration using Python. So I have Python installed on my machine. And what I would want would be that language specific extension. So I've got the Python language support installed. Then for Azure, what I want to be able to do is view the resources and then interact with Azure functions. So specifically, it's the Azure resources extension and then the Azure Functions extensions. They're the two I require. And then once I've installed those, I'll go ahead and authenticate to Azure. It uses its own integrated authentication. And so then once I've done that, if I jump over to my little Azure tab over here, I'll be able to go and see all of my resources. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and created an empty new Azure Functions app called Avengers Assemble. And as you can see, there are currently no functions in it. If we went to the Azure portal, I can see the same thing. The functions are empty and it's telling me, hey, look, you could go ahead and create it in the Azure portal. Or you can go and integrate with VS Code, which is what we're going to do. Or there are some tools for other editors as well. And the documentation is great. If you go and look at the documentation, I've linked this in the description. It walks through what you need to do for all of the various languages. So I can go and select the language that I'm using. And it will give you the guidance and the links to the different things to actually go and get that set up. But right now, I have no functions. So over here in my Explorer, I've created an empty folder just called Functions Avengers Info. And I'll hit the F1 key. Now the F1 key, I can now type in Azure Functions. So I've got the extension installed. And it's going to give me a whole set of different options. Now what I want initially is the Create New Project. So I'll go ahead and I'll say Create a New Project. I'll go and browse and select that folder I created. So I'm going to go to my Functions. Avengers Info. I select the language I want. So I'm going to use Python. I'm going to use the V2 model that lets me use the in code annotations to modify certain aspects like the routing. I get a nice folder based structure. Then it's asking me to set up a virtual environment. I don't have to do this. I can absolutely just say skip the virtual environment. That would enable me to edit the code locally and just deploy it to Azure. But I won't be able to do any local troubleshooting or debugging. I'm going to say use Python 3.11. That's what I've got installed. And that's compatible with Azure Functions. And then as normal, you just select well, what's the trigger for your function. And I'm going to use the HTTP trigger. I'm going to create a really basic little REST interface. So I'll select the HTTP trigger and then the name of my function. So I would just say... Um, get Avengers. So enter that. Uh, the authorization level will be function. Now it's going to go off and create my code. And it creates a structure for us. And it'll even give us a little bit of help. So it's showing me over here on the right hand side, some information about the Azure functions, the trigger in Python. I'm just going to close that down. And at this point, I would modify it as required. Now, I'm not going to use the logging, so I'm going to take that out, but I am going to use uh, JSON. And you've got no desire to sit and watch me go through changing everything about the app. But just one thing I want to point out, 
I don't want the route to be get Avengers. If I want to create a REST like API, I want it to just be Avengers. And what I'm going to let it do is pass in an optional code name. So optional, I'll put question mark at the end of it. And notice <laughs> GitHub Copilot is already suggesting, hey, do you want to do a method of get? So GitHub Copilot is saying, hey, you probably want to do this next. And I do want to do that. So I would just start typing again and hit tab. So the route, remember this is using Python v2, so I can just use the annotation to change the route that I'm gonna use. And now I would go and change the rest of the code and through the magic of editing, it's gonna happen really quickly. Okay, so now I have my finished function. Again, all it really does is it looks to see, have you passed in the code name? And it stores it as a variable. If you have, it checks, can it find a match? If it does find a match, it returns them. If you don't specify the code name, it just dumps out the entire list. So from here, I wanna deploy it. So all I have to do is I push that F1 key again, and this time I want to deploy it to Azure. So I'm using this option. So I'm gonna to deploy it to Azure. It's gonna show me a list of my subscriptions. And then I'll select the function app I want to deploy to, my Avengers Assemble. It'll warn me if there was already things there. Hey, are you sure this is going to wipe everything out that you currently have deployed? Here we go. Yes, I want to overwrite it. And it will now package everything up and go and deploy that into Azure. So it's telling me the deployment succeeded. I could go and look at the various logs if I wanted to. I'm going to close that. If I jump over to my Azure tab now and look at my functions, this should update. I should now see a function available. And sure enough, there it is, get Avengers. And if I jump to the portal, if I hit my refresh, it will hopefully now show me my get Avengers. If I select it, I can test it. So my method is going to be get only. Now notice I've actually messed something up. This is actually a good experiment here. This isn't the code I typed in. So, so what I did is I forgot to save. So I'm gonna save my file. But then if I wanna deploy again, I just repeat. I'm gonna pretend I did that deliberately. Deploy to Azure. Select everything again, exactly the same as I did last time. Nothing's gonna be different. But now it will actually have the code that I typed in as opposed to the initial version. Okay, so that succeeded. If we go and look back again, let's close this. Select my get Avengers. Hopefully now it's my code. There's my function. If we do test, now I only see the get method, which is what we would have expected. If I don't specify any code name, it should just dump out the entire list. If I specify a code name, it just gives me the one I expected. So that was it. That was developing a function in VS Code and deploying it to Azure. You saw it was super simple. And if I wanted to continue this, so let's say I want to go and add a second function to my function app. I'm doing it in the same file and I'm just going to add it afterwards. So once again, I'm playing around with the route. I don't want it to be the name of my function, which is delete Avenger. I want it to just be Avengers. So it's part of the same path for my REST API, but I am now only supporting the delete method. And this time I require a code name. There's no question mark, so it's not optional. And just to play around, I'm actually gonna grab the method this time. And only if it's delete, do I go and grab that code name from my route parameters? And then I'm not doing anything. I'm just gonna pretend I have deleted it. I'm just returning, yes, I deleted it. And if it's not the delete method, I'm gonna say, hey, this method is not supported. And I'm gonna make sure I save it this time. Apparently that's quite important. And I can just do F1 again, deploy to Azure. Everything is exactly the same as it was before. Select the app, it's gonna warn me again that it will wipe out that particular deployment, which is good. It will package it all up 
and send it into Azure. So that succeeded. Once again, I could go and look at the details and it automatically now shows me, hey, I've got a new function is available. If I go into the portal, if I hit refresh right here, now I can see I've got two functions. If you ever get an error, I would a lot of the times just redeploy it again and it will generally solve it. But if I now go and look at my delete Avenger, there's all my code. Remember, it's the same file, so I'd see both of my functions. If I try and test it, I only see the delete method, which is what we would expect. But I should now be able to type in some name. And sure enough, Hulk has been deleted. So that was it. I mean, that was editing in VS Code and then deploying to Azure. But I probably want to go a step further because doing that redeploy to Azure every single time is not ideal. What I would rather do is be able to actually develop in VS Code and do basic tests in VS Code. So I need one other thing. To develop Azure Functions locally, what we have to install is the Azure Functions core tools. So again, you can select the programming language, but what you would basically do then is whether you're Windows, Mac OS or Linux, you're gonna go and install the Azure Functions core tools. And remember, I already have Python and a version that is compatible with Azure Functions installed on my machine. So now what I can do, if I go back to my VS Code, is I can just push F5. So here for my Azure Functions, if I push F5, so let's go back to the terminal. It's now creating that Azure Functions environment and it's showing me, first of all, well, here are the URLs. So for the delete method, it's localhost 7071 API Avengers code name. For the get method, well, it's the same, except the code name is optional. And I could now go ahead and just test those. I could have various debugging running. I could watch different things as I'm going through this. So I could go and actually attach the Python functions. But I can now test it. So if I do a call command, and I'll just do tab because it's doing the right thing. What it's showing me here, my local host, it's not HTTPS, it's just HTTP 7071 API Avengers. And if I just push enter, then it dumps out the entire list. If I give it a particular Avenger, then it just dumps out that particular Avenger. And likewise, I could change it to delete. And now it has deleted that Avenger. So I can do all of the same testing locally as I could as part of actually doing it in Azure. And it goes and shows me what's happening over here when I go and look at that particular terminal for the functions environment. And again, I can actually go and attach to the Python functions, which I'm doing right here. I could start debugging. I could do another instance. Like all of these capabilities are now available for me to locally debug my Azure function. And when I'm finished with that, I could just up here on the top, I could do a disconnect. Notice I could do pause and other actions up here. And now I just push the key to close it. And I'm back. So that, that's really all I had to do to enable that local debugging of my Azure functions. I already had Python installed. I just installed the core tools. And now, hey, I can go and test it locally. So that was it. Um, I hope that was useful as just an idea of, it really is very, very simple to do this. Again, if you ever hit a problem, within the Azure environment when you've deployed it, I would just redeploy it again. Hit the F1 key, deploy it again. It takes you, what, 30 seconds, and it seems to clear up most things. If you get in a really, really bad state, the other thing you can always try doing in your function app is just restart it. While I'm doing development, um, that generally will always clear up uh, a problem 
if I'm having it. So as always, I hope that was useful. Uh, until the next video, take care.